Now, one of the very best things about Android has always been the way that you can basically bugger about with it and set it up exactly how you like. And one of the quickest and easiest ways to change up the full look and feel of your Android phone is just by downloading a new launcher. A fresh launcher can completely transform your desktops, adding greater customization or stripping back that functionality to the bare basics. And in 2020, the selection of worthy launchers hitting the Google Play Store is rather immense. So this right here is my personal pick of my favorite Android launchers as we head into 2020. No routing or any shenanigans like that required, literally just download and you're good to go. And for more of the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. One of my long-term favorite Android launchers is definitely Nova. It's been around longer than chocolate digestives, but like the seminal biscuit, Nova is still one of the best around. Once again, pretty much every aspect of the Nova overlay can be meddled about with. Everything's fair game, from the transitions and icon visuals to the app store and animations. Like ADW, Nova offers impressive gesture control too. For instance, you can also set up shortcuts to open up specific features when you swipe across an app icon, which proves very handy indeed. I've actually published a full Nova launcher tips and tricks guide, so go check that bad boy out for a much closer look at those awesome features, and whether the Prime version is worth an upgrade. Spoiler alert, it totally is. Alternatively, if you're still a fan of that stock Android design, but you'd prefer even deeper customization, then definitely check out Hyperion. At first glance, there's little to distinguish Hyperion from the Pixel launcher, but like Nova and some of the other launchers that I've featured in my best of round at part one, there's some impressive depth here once you dive under that shiny surface. All of the features that you'd expect are packed away in the settings, including some smart gesture support for easier one-handed use, plenty of control over the UI theme, including the color schemes, animations, and icon presentation, the ability to add folders to your app store, and basically so much stuff that I couldn't even possibly go into all of the loveliest bits right here. And best of all, it is a silky smooth experience. But note though that to unlock all of those lush Hyperion features, including the full gesture support, you will need to stump up the sum of £1.79. Not exactly a bank break and asking price. And you'll also get a very similar vibe from the slightly boringly titled Customized Pixel Launcher. Just remember to spell it incorrectly with a Z when you type it into Google Play. Don't worry America, we still love you. As the name kind of hints, this launcher offers a stock Android look and feel in its default state, but dive underneath that surface and you'll find that you can tweak, fiddle and poke around to your heart's content. Pretty much every feature found in CPL can be adjusted to some degree, with a mind-boggling array of toggles and sliders on offer. And you can cull any bits that you're not really a fan of, like that bulky search bar or the at-a-glance widget. Like with Nova Launcher, you can play around with the color and opacity of visual elements, try out different transitions and animations, add gesture shortcuts to fast access your notifications and settings, and bugger tons of other bits. And anyone worried about privacy can even add fingerprint identification to any sensitive apps that they don't want other people snooping about in. Another effort that doesn't mess with that stock Android look and feel is the Lawn Chair Launcher, and the good news is that version 2 of this streamlined UI has just hit the Google Play Store. Like the other launchers I've already mentioned here, you get a good selection of customization options. Everything you see can be tweaked and fiddled with. You can keep the likes of the Google Feed if you download the separate Lawn Feed plugin, or ditch it entirely if you prefer. The At A Glance home screen widget is a great addition, allowing you instant info on stuff like the current song that's playing. And I like the selection of gesture shortcuts too, which allow you to easily yank down that notifications panel, hibernate the phone, or load up your favorite app. And best of all, the Lawn Chair Launcher is completely free to download and check out. So even if you're not really a fan, you're not out of pocket. Lovely stuff. If you love the standard Pixel Launcher, but you prefer more control and a hearty pinch of pizzazz, then Action Launcher is a solid bet. There are too many great additions here to mention, although one of our favorite is the shutters feature, which reveals an app's widget with a quick swipe across the icon. That's one of the best features that we found on BlackBerry's Android handsets, and it's a great little space saver and very satisfying. The general theme in it is just excellent as well. Your desktop elements can actually change color to match your background, which is sheer genius. You can customize absolutely everything here, including the search bar, to add your own handy shortcuts, while the menu system makes it easy to jump straight into whatever app you need. To get the most lovely action launcher features and unlock the full set of customization options, it will cost you four quid fifty. We definitely reckon it's worth it though. Now, if you happen to be hankering for something completely different, then definitely the Microsoft launcher is still worth a squint. Microsoft fans lamenting the demise of their beloved Windows Phone may be disappointed that the Microsoft launcher for Android is not much at all like that classic tile-based UI. All the same, there's lots to love here, with enough unique touches to set the overlay apart from any rivals. Sign in with your Microsoft account and you can sync things up between your phone and your Windows laptop. 
The Glance widget serves up full Cortana support, as well as fast access to your tasks, apps and other essential info. Plus there's a news timeline if you want it as well. The daily change in Bing wallpapers are a nice touch, and as usual you can play about with the dock and all the other desktop elements to suit your own particular tastes. The Microsoft Launcher can be a little bit stuttery here and there, but we still like it well enough. If on the other hand you would rather declutter your desktops, then maybe check out the Niagara Launcher. This streamlined approach basically gets rid of all those grids of apps and instead you get a short list of your favourites. Although your other apps can also be quickly opened using the Cascade and A to Z index. After spending some time with Niagara, I think I might actually prefer the system to hiding everything away in an app store. It is very neat and efficient. Niagara makes life easier in other ways as well, so for instance if you play music or an audiobook, some handy media controls will appear right there on the desktop for fast access. You can swipe right on any app to check out any waiting notifications or jump straight to certain features, while a swipe down will open the notifications tab. You do get some simple customization in Niagara, including a choice of light, dark or ultra dark theming for the settings panel. However, the UI is basically very straightforward, so there's not actually that much to tweak here. Overall, if you want something that's quick and simple to use, then Niagara is pretty bloody wonderful. And another app that completely changes that stock Android experience is the Smart Launcher. Rather than furnishing you with a standard app store, this time you get all manner of options for finding what you need. You can add two rows of your favourite apps to the main desktop, while a swipe right reveals the rest of them all split into preset categories. Alternatively, swipe up and you'll open the Smart Search panel, which helps you to find contacts as well as any apps. Swipe right and you'll open up a widgets page, while swiping down drags down a news feed powered by Microsoft News, which unfortunately is pretty limited in its customization. And thankfully, all of these different pages can be rearranged or even removed entirely from within the Smart Launcher settings, so you can basically set up your handset however you like. The layout definitely does take a bit of getting used to, but there's plenty to love after that adjustment period. For one, I do really like the stylish custom icons, which can be allocated to your favourite apps. Predictably, you can change the shape and the size of the icons or replace them entirely if you're not a fan. And if you spunk up the rather hefty £5.49 for the Pro version, you get even more customization options. However, I did notice that the Smart Launcher was a little bit stuttery at times here on the Galaxy S10 Plus, which definitely detracted from the overall presentation. And that right there is a roundup of just a few of my personal favourite Android launches as we hit 2020, but no doubt I've missed out a few of your own personal favourites. So feel free to call me a massive wang in the comments down below and clue me into what your own personal Personal picks would be. I'm hoping to do a follow-up video to this next week with the best Android launches that you guys recommended. So stay tuned for that. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers. Love you.